I was never interested in journaling. It always seemed like a waste of time, not really all that helpful, and honestly, pretty lame. Like, I might as well walk around with a pink princess diary. If it works for you, that's great. It just wasn't for me. Then I tried it out for a few weeks, and my thoughts have changed. So it's day one. I've got a brand new journal. Um, I'm really not sure what I'm going to write today. I'm not sure what to expect. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just going to jump into it, write whatever comes to mind, and figure it out along the way. There are a lot of reasons I decided to try out journaling. At the time, I was dealing with a lot of self-doubt, constantly questioning my life decisions, and just at a little bit of a low point. Lots of productivity gurus and people I look up to journal, so I was super curious to see if I could benefit from it. So it's pretty early in this challenge, but one of the things I'm already noticing is clarity in what I wanna accomplish each day. I feel a little bit more focused, a little sharper, a little more calm, ready to just get after the day. I'm only spending like five to 15 minutes doing it, just kind of however long I feel like, not being too strict. And it doesn't really feel like a chore. It's actually kind of fun. I'm journaling in a park today. I don't really have a good reason why. I just don't get out of the house enough and I thought it looked cinematic. And it did. But then my legs got all itchy, a bug landed on my neck, and a spider ran across my page. I'm out of here. I ended up just journaling in my car. But by journaling at different times of the day, in different environments, for different lengths of time, I started to get a general sense of how it affected me. Honestly, there's a lot of things going so good in my life right now. And actually taking time and writing about it and reflecting on it and remembering how good life can be feels really good. Like I was feeling pretty average this morning, maybe like slightly better than normal, but it just went up to like an eight out of 10, nine out of 10. Writing about it definitely like exaggerated that emotion. During the first week, that was the biggest change I noticed. When I was feeling down, journaling helped me slow down, think more logically, and sort of stabilize those emotions. But what I hadn't expected is when I was already in a good mood, I sort of felt more gratitude, appreciative, and just thankful. So I started experimenting with different kinds of journaling to see if I could enjoy it even more. All right, it's the beginning of week two. For week two, I'm gonna change things up and get into bullet journaling. The funny thing about bullet journaling is it's the only style of journaling I think I've ever heard of and I don't even know what it means. But I know it's super popular, so I wanna look into it. I quickly found out that bullet journaling is nothing like traditional journaling. If anything, it's more of an organizational system for tasks, to-do lists, scheduling events, and overall productivity. And it's kinda confusing to set up. I'm gonna have to rewatch this, I don't know what's going on. There are plenty of videos on it, but it involves an index, a future log, a monthly calendar, monthly log, daily log, collections, but eventually I got a decent grasp on it. I'm very skeptical that I'm gonna prefer this over my digital setup, which is Notion and Google Calendar, but I guess I'm just gonna fill it out and see how it goes. I just scheduled my first meeting, wrote it in the bullet journal, I'm a little worried I'm gonna miss it. I love the reminders on my phone with things like Google Calendar. I also feel like now I have to keep this on me at all times, which is a little bit of a pain. But yeah, I'll keep you updated. All right, so my initial impressions of journaling weren't great. It seemed a little bit tedious, a little bit clunky. Now that I'm mostly set up for the week, and I'm starting to do some of the things like cross out tasks I no longer wanna do or move them to the next day. I do like the sort of physical checklist aspect of it. It's nice to not have to go onto my computer, to not have to open Notion on my phone and just cross something off without any chance of getting distracted by something digitally. That part I do like. 
But don't get me wrong, there were definitely drawbacks. I just got back from somewhere where I needed to schedule an appointment. Totally didn't even think to bring the journal with me. But it just got me thinking, if I'm trying to keep track of events, what do I always have on me? My phone. What would be a pain to always have on me? The journal. And of course, I can record it in my phone and then record it in my journal but that just seems redundant, unnecessary. So as far as events go, I don't think I'd ever want to put them in something like a notebook or journal. I definitely had mixed thoughts on the bullet journal after a week, but we'll come back to that at the end of the video. All right, it's the beginning of week three and I want to shake things up a bit and start experimenting with prompt journaling. Journaling prompts can be specific questions or statements that encourage you to reflect on a particular topic, theme, or aspect of your life. My prompt for this morning was what is holding you back from being more productive and what can you do about that? And I think I only spent like seven minutes on that, but actually slowing down, thinking about what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, what I could do better, what's working. It's one of those things I just don't deeply think about on a daily basis. And I think spending that seven minutes will probably get me more than seven minutes of work done today. Like I think there's a pretty good return on my investment if I'm thinking about this throughout the day. And speaking of a good return on investment, one of the best investments you can make in yourself is checking out the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. I'm always trying out new habits. I'm looking for little ways to improve my life and Skillshare has helped me a lot with that. If you haven't heard of Skillshare, it's the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts in film, photography, design, and a whole lot more. I just took Thomas Frank's class on habit building and have already implemented some new ideas that are working well for me. Skillshare has loads of classes on productivity and personal development, but also things like writing or marketing and that catalog is constantly expanding. They recently added three new categories, which are creative careers, creativity and inspiration, and AI and innovation, which I think is super cool. And my favorite part of this sponsorship is the first 500 people to use my link in the description of this video will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. If there's something you've always wanted to learn or you're looking to level up your skills, take the first step today. Skillshare makes it super easy to get started. All right, so my final thoughts on journaling I'm a fan now, mostly. It's meditative, enjoyable, and I love the low barrier to entry. I can literally write anything for any length of time at any time of day at any location. It's a really easy habit to get into. I'm being a little bit vague here. There's only so much I wanna publicly broadcast on the internet, but it helped me get out of a rut, find a little more clarity in my life and every time I journaled, I felt just a little bit happier. It's a tool I'll use periodically for years to come. I enjoyed it. I can't say the same for bullet journaling. There's no point to these videos if I'm not being honest. I don't wanna carry it around. It felt like another thing I have to constantly check throughout the day. It's so much easier for me to keep everything digital. It wasn't for me.